Hello and welcome. I'm Arnand Naidu sitting in for RISCON. Britain and Argentina went to war over the Falkland Islands almost three decades ago. Now tensions between the two countries are rising again after Britain started looking for oil just north of the islands. Sovereignty over the islands has been a sore spot for almost two centuries. The Falklands have been a British possession since 1833, but Argentines consider Las Malvinas to be a colonial outpost. The dispute led to a brief but bloody war in 1982 when British forces expel their Argentine adversaries. So today we ask, are they the Falklands or Las Malvinas? And can the issue be resolved peacefully once and for all? A reminder that you can join our conversation with your questions and comments. You can send an SMS or email. And of course, we also welcome your phone calls on the show. With us today are Douglas Hurd, a veteran British politician who was Minister of State at the UK Foreign and Commonwealth Office at the time of the 1982 Falklands War. Lord Hurd joins us from London and from Buenos Aires, Ambassador Alberto Pedro Dalotto, the Chief of Staff for Argentina's Foreign Minister, Jorge Tena, who recently took the dispute to the United Nations. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Lord nice. Hurd, Lord Hurd, as we mentioned there, it's, it's been 28 years since the Falklands War. Um, and now we have oil exploration getting underway just north of the islands. It's raising tensions again. Argentina is renewing its claims to the islands. We've heard of reports in the past few days of uh, a merchant ship being blocked by Argentina. An attempt was made to block it. We've also heard of a British destroyer uh, in um, the Falkland Islands. And uh, we've heard that there's a submarine in the region as well. Uh, question is, could these tensions escalate to the point of conflict again? I, I don't think so, and, and the Argentine government has made it clear that it's not going to pursue its claim um, by, by military means. So I think that uh, they will not attempt again to seize the Falklands by force. The, the question, of course, is really what the people who live there really think. Uh, what do they, how do they answer your question? And I've been there twice. I know it quite well. And I know that they give an overwhelming, unanimous answer. We are British and we intend to stay British. That's the view of the people who actually live on the islands. Ambassador Lotto, do you accept that? The people on the islands say they want to remain British. Falklands will remain British. Uh, well, I have to say first that uh, in our understanding, the people living in the islands, people who we respect and, and all along our history, we have always respected and said that um, we want to to live with them and to live together in, in respecting their way of life. And in the past, and Mr. Hertz knows very well that during the, the 60s and the 70s, even the General Assembly of the United Nations congratulated Argentina for the way of helping uh, these people. But uh, the, here is a, there is another problem, and, and you know that in 1833, Argentina had a population living in the islands, and this population was expelled by a warship uh, coming from, from the United Kingdom at that, at that time. And since then, we have always protested against the United Kingdom uh, and asked for recognition uh, of the fact that there is a sovereignty dispute uh, over the islands. So, we respect the people living in the islands, we want to have friendship relations with them, but we want to sit down and, as the General Assembly has requested, having the possibility of, uh, of starting discussion of the question of sovereignty. And I have to remind that the United uh, Kingdom agreed with this before uh, 1982, but now, after the war, they decided not to continue conversations with us on this matter. Lord Heard, two points there. One, uh, the ambassador there telling us that uh, Argentina is willing to share those islands with uh, British residents over there right now. And the well, other that's point... Very, that's, very, that's, very, that's very kind of the Argentines. What he's saying is we respect the islanders as long as they come under the Argentine flag. Well, that's the one thing they don't want to do. And if anything confirmed them in that view, it was, of course, the Argentine attack on 1982, which did huge harm huge damage to the possibility of a cooperation between the islanders and the, and the Argentine mainland, which such cooperation is obviously a very good sense, very practical sense. And the other point the ambassador made there was that there were Argentines living on the island uh, up until 1833 and they were expelled. Well, we can go back into history if we like. 
but it seems to me that in the, the year 2000 and uh, whatever it is, 2000 plus, in the 2000s, we, we are now living in a world in which you cannot treat human beings as if they are just pieces on a board. You belong to this country, you belong to that. You ask them what they want and, and you abide by the, you respect the result. Um, and to say that we respect the islanders but we don't have any intention of listening to their views on who they belong to. I, I, I've been there several times and I don't know any part of the world in which the Britishness of the inhabitants is more clear. They, they are exactly like uh, parts of Britain were uh, several year, years ago. Uh, uh, they, are, um, they are naturally and passionately British and that again was shown by their reactions in 1982. Ambassador, is the Argentine position to treat the people on the island as if they are people on a board who can be moved, who can be changed? No, not at all. Uh, our position, uh, as I mentioned before, has always been uh, a position of respect of the human rights and the way of life of the people living in the islands. Of course, there was an exception uh, during the, the conflict in 1982. Uh, this conflict uh, was uh, started by an illegitimate governor of Argentina at the time, but uh, you know very well that since 1983 we have a full democracy respecting human rights, uh, attached to international law, and we, even in our constitution, it, it is said that uh, the recovery of the islands to Argentine sovereignty has to be done according to the principles of international law and in, in by peaceful means. So there is uh, no possibility at all uh, for legal reasons, uh, but also for, for, for reasons of which is the deep feeling of our country, uh, is to solve this in a peaceful way. But the United Kingdom has to understand that there is a claim coming from the 19th century, and uh, they have to comply to several resolutions uh, of the General Assembly of the United Nations since 1965. There are resolutions telling the United Kingdom and telling Argentina that they have to sit down and discuss the question of sovereignty. We have done this, and the British have done this in the past. Uh, but after uh, 1982, they didn't want to continue with this. Uh, but I suppose that we have to agree that uh, the war uh, is, uh, is not a mean to, to solve questions of sovereignty. Uh, they have to agree that, as, as the General Assembly has said, this is a colonial enclave and do it, we don't have to forget that and we are in the 21st century and colonialism is something unaccepta uh, unacceptable. So, uh, in the respect of the rights of the people in the islands, uh, we have to discuss the main question here, that is that's the one thing that uh, um, Lord Heard, uh, I, I believe he doesn't want to discuss. Okay, we had a slight problem with our satellite link there to Buenos Aires. Let's go to Lord Heard. Lord Heard, uh, we heard there uh, that Britain is practicing colonialism here. We also heard before that um, that Britain is unwilling to discuss the sovereignty of the island. Because we have no, no doubt about it, because the views of the inhabitants are, in our view, paramount. And uh, if, you, if you are attacked in your house by somebody who ties you up and, uh, and imprisons you, and then that person comes, albeit with a different government, some years later, and says, well, we still want to tie you up, we still want to imprison you, but we will do it by peaceful means. You are not inclined, after you've had this experience in the past, to, w to welcome them or to say, let us sit down and discuss this matter. Th there is nothing, on the question of sovereignty, there is nothing to discuss. Um, it's not an issue of the 19th century, it's an issue of the 21st century, in which the rights of human beings to decide their own future is increasingly recognized. In your view, does Argentina have any legal basis to make these claims to the Falklands? No, uh, we, we, don't, we don't think that there is, and that's why we, um, we accept that the right of British companies to drill for oil, it will take some years for, to discover whether there is actually oil in worthwhile quantities, and much will depend on the price of oil in the oil market and so on. So there's a long way to go before it becomes a, an oil, before it starts producing those uh, million, billions of, of gallons of oil that is talked about. So it's a long-term long prospect, and not all the islanders are in favor of uh, turning the country, uh, turning their country into, a, into an oil reservoir. Um, so it's a, it's a slightly controversial and sensitive point, but we don't have any doubt about one point, which is that legally 
internationally, under international law, we, we have the right to persevere and to see if there is oil. Ambassador, uh, Lord Hurd brought up the issue of oil. That is the point of contention right now. Uh, how much of a problem um, is this for Argentina, the fact that British companies are now drilling for oil very close to the Falklands? Well, uh, the, 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 the reason uh, we have presented all these uh, notes of protest to the government of the United Kingdom is that we believe that uh, the exploration of, uh, of the continental shelf, it is made in an area of dispute, and we cannot consent to that. I mean, uh, this we believe, and we even uh, have discussed many times with, uh, with our uh, friends from the United Kingdom that this is uh, uh, included in, a, in an area th that is under dispute of sovereignty, and there are several resolutions of the United Nations, of the General Assembly, telling that the both parties have to refrain uh, of uh, any kind of unilateral activities that is changing the situation in the area that is, is another process of uh, negotiations on the, mo on the central uh, fact of sovereignty. I can mention Resolution 3149 of the General Assembly. There is clearly said that uh, it, is clearly, it is clearly established that any unilateral act action has some is something that has to be any, both parties has to has to abstain of, of introducing any kind of change. There is a process that has been interrupted in 1982 that we want to resume. There is right. a, uh, uh, an action of good offices yeah. by the Secretary General of the United Nations, and we expect our friends from the United Kingdom to comply to this recommendation made by the international community. Okay, we're going to have to take a break right now. Widely differing opinions here, as expected. We'd also like to hear from you, of course. You can call us with your view. The number is right there on your screen right now. Don't forget, you can also email or SMS us as well. We're going to take a short break right now. More of our discussion in a moment. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. We're discussing the long dormant dispute between Britain and Argentina over a string of islands in the South Atlantic known as the Falklands or Las Malvinas, depending on where you stand. I'm joined from London by former British Foreign Secretary Douglas Hurd, who joins us uh, from the British capital. He's also the author of the book, Choose Your Weapons, a look back at two centuries of successes and failures of British foreign policy. We also have with us uh, top Argentine Foreign Ministry official Alberto Pedro Dalotto, who joins us from Buenos Aires. Gentlemen, welcome back to both of you. Ambassador, let me start with you for this half of the program. We received an email here from Matt Peak, uh, and he writes, um, Argentina has never owned these islands. Their argument is based only on its proximity. Well, uh, I have to say that this is wrong. I recommend this person to, to give a look uh, in some books of history, but uh, there are clear, clear demonstrations that Argentina inherited these territories from Spain uh, when we became independent in, 19, uh, in 1816. Uh, we established a people there, we established a government since uh, 1820, and we stayed there for uh, almost uh, 13 years. Uh, there are several acts of uh, or, or, or demonstration of sovereignty, of exercise of sovereignty on those islands until 1833 when the, the United Kingdom, I, I mentioned this before, sent a, a warship and expelled the people there. And since then we have always protested consistently all over the years uh, and never uh, accepting this act of force. 